Morning. I swear a lot. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Limbus Company. So, a Pugschnacht is apparently on its way. It's like a week from now, so that's nice. The ID looks cool. Kind of wanted to find that one out on my own, but I didn't, but whatever. But that's really all I have to say about Wapurgishnacht until it's here. Looking forward to getting Magic Bullet Otis. Let's do a temple. We'll get through this early stuff nice and quick. Oh, I can't find it. There it is. I guess we do need to try and get Ryoshu, don't we? Yeah, kind of. All right. But I need to save my um, lunacy a bit. I don't want to spend too much of it. But I would like to round out the sinking team. It's not looking good, is it? It's not looking great. Not looking ideal. Not looking very Yi Sang around here. Which would be pretty funny if we got Yi Sang from this, because that's not what we're looking for. But I do wonder if Wapurgish Snacks does roll around in time for me, like before I finish this canto, because I don't know how long it's going to take me from this point onwards. But if it does, I may end up adding two IDs to that team instead of just one. Yeah, I remember you. And no. Cool. I wasted my lunacy. You love to see it, I suppose. You don't. It's whatever. Let's just get back to the horrible whales. Oh yeah, cruise party. I forgot we're on a cruise ship now. I still don't see anyone on the deck. It's almost like it's an abandoned ship, like I've been saying a lot this whole time. Ah, excellent. Yes, good. A bellow that will punch right through the drum and bass. That won't annoy everyone else on the skiff. <laughs> that wasn't a bellow, that was a shriek. Yep, <laughs> I'm It's just a light flap sound as well. He's like, stop it. <laughs> Probably not, Gregor. Most people don't like that, actually. They'll probably think we're pirates, so we're probably going to have to try and convince them that we're not, assuming there's even anyone on there. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> like, I understand it has to happen for the purposes of a story, but this is one of those occasions where I'm like, there is a distinct lack of logic amongst the entire fucking crew right now. Even Dante. Like, Dante should have turned around and gone, no, we're not doing that, actually. But alas, a story must happen. And, you know, it's probably going to be pretty funny, so I'm not really complaining. <laughs> I mean, even here being here to gather intel is pointless. How much are they actually going to fucking know? R realistically, about anything. They're having a party. They can't hear anything. Whatever. <laughs> Very fancy. And the music restarted as well. So you know the party has just re-begun. It looks very deserted, though. Numerous liquor bottles and half-eaten food were strewn about haphazardly all over the deck. Very abruptly, yes. That is kind of the impression I got. <laughs> it's likely they just moved the party to the kitchen, like every good party does. Don Quixote, running on sheer excitement for a party, you scuttled to the cabins. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Heathcliff slammed his fist into the loudspeaker that's been blaring music this entire time. Good job, Heathcliff. It's like the opposite of that thing that guy used to do in that show. You know, where he tapped the jukebox and it would start playing again. Oh, he just had a Nice, peace, calmful, good. Now we'll be able to hear Don Quixote get murdered by whatever she's ran in to go stare at. Uh. I decided to remain silent. The music was pretty loud, but if there were people here, they probably didn't appreciate us breaking their incredibly expensive sound system. <sighs> You know, the tone has shifted rather dramatically. Yeah, I have noticed that. Is it about ghost ships, perchance? I suspect it might be about ghost ships. 
Don Quixote returns with a dumbfounded expression on her face. Oh boy. There was not nary a soul, not one party goer to share in my excitement. Naught means naught, Rodia. There was no one, not a soul. Like Merceau said, the party ended very abruptly. I would say fish people, but I feel like there'd be more damage if that happened. Like, you know, they're not they're not fucking ninjas. They wouldn't be able to just whisk everyone off the ship. There'd be a struggle. So what happened? They're really fucking good at hide and seek if that's the case. Also, I don't think they'd be this good at it because we haven't seen a fucking soul since we got here. Did the waves already? That's the point, maybe the party goers were herded into the storage space as like a makeshift prison. It's pretty clear that something bad happened, you know? <laughs> yes, this might be relevant, Hongle, please go ahead. Good, so that, this is like that, but on the ocean. Ah, let's get the party going again. It was less scary when that was music, yeah. Unfortunately, Heathcliff committed an oof on the music system. I smashed it. It's very smashed. I punch very good, young lad. It is gone. Yeah, it's not really worth sticking around to figure out what happened, is it? Really? It's nothing to do with us. There's <laughs> like four different conversations happening at once. And <laughs> I love ghost stories. Sinclair hates ghost stories. <laughs> you people are fucking idiots. Arms stretched forward, hopping up and down. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Wherefore are thy palms so sodden? Big man. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I have a condition which makes my hands go really fucking clammy sometimes. It's not great. I don't like it. I don't think that's the case here, though. Although he is wearing gloves, so how do you even know? Sinclair hurriedly left the room in search of the ship's storage. <laughs> As well as the style at the time. Such profundity. That was some damp squib. Oh, I'm gonna start using that. Alas, he sang, we are all disappointed, truly. <laughs> he scared the kid off. I'll go find Sinclair. I think there's gonna be a combat section on this boat. But the question is, what? Well, there's a combat section, so that's a good sign. It's pretty dark in here. If I had eyes, I wouldn't be able to see. The hallway to the storage was significantly narrower than the party deck. I had nothing but faint, occasional flashing lights to guide me through this dark hallway. I decided to proceed carefully, considering I am completely defenseless and probably should not have wandered off on my own. Seriously, this place is way creepier than wherever Hong Lu was going with his story. Sinclair? You there? 
Sinclair. I wasn't sure where these water droplets were falling from, but they were really getting on my nerves. I don't see anything here. Not that I could in this darkness, even if there were. All I see is a very faint ray of light and... Sinclair. Standing ominously. Sinclair. And Sinclair. It seemed to me that he'd been standing here for a good while. Exactly how long? I wasn't sure. Uh... Sinclair stood there, still like death. He looked up. There are shadows. I don't like that. What are you looking at? Now that I'm in here, I noticed that there was something funny about the ray of light. I assumed that the light I saw was from a lamp or something, but no. It was just there, surrounding the general area where Sinclair stood. There was no light source. So the light's shining in from the outside, maybe? No, that doesn't make sense either. We're deep in the ship's storage, a big metal box with no opening for even a single strand of natural light. Besides, it's night time. This is getting more and more bizarre by the second. Where is this light coming from? Probably a ghost. Sinclair, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> There's only two of us and I can't fight. Sinclair's like, mm, I don't know. Run now, I'm your manager. You gotta do what I say. Come on. <laughs> Fear of the unknown intensifies. What I saw defied every bit of common sense I had accumulated over the journey, and I had to get Sinclair out of there. I snatched and tugged his limp wrist. Come on, wake up! That seemed to have done the trick. Sinclair suddenly snapped back to reality and began screaming. <laughs> he bolted out of the room. <laughs> so, it was all chill then. Wait, what's that in the background? Was that there before? Huh. <laughs> oh, the kid's got the crackers. What's going on? <laughs> so, you know, everything's fine. We should leave, like, now. We should have already left, actually. Then that was... <laughs> that is the most logical thing I've ever seen someone say, where it's like, we don't actually have enough time to stand around and talk about this. Ooh. It's quite bassy this time as well. Whale of the Thousand Strands Mermaid. So the mermaids vary quite significantly. When killed in combat, deal SP 10 SP damage to the unit that attacked it last. Well, uh, Whispers is going to come in handy, and uh, so we'll probably... Actually, we can do it this turn. Yeah, fuck it. Go for them. They may just... They may be spooky, but they're still just fish. I ain't scared of no fish. Because I'm not a character in a Lovecraft story. This game really does have the perfect roster to be in a... Um, uh, Darkest Dungeon mod, though, doesn't it? Surely, because, you know, we've got um, Nargle and Hammer, and those guys speak for themselves. We've got a bunch of fish people, which are great for the cove. Okay, so that's two out of four areas. I'm working on it, all right? I'm workshopping it. We haven't seen the rest of the game yet. But surely, surely there's something we can work with. Like, you could even... <laughs> it's a bit dismissive, but you could have, like, the G-Corp soldiers in the Warrens, because there's, like, the vermin comparison. You can have, like, Ting Tangs and other gang members as, like, bandits. The ruins, I don't know what to put in there. Abnormalities, perhaps. It all fits. It all works. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. Are these any different? Nope. I don't think we're going to have much troubles. The music is pretty good, must be said. I like it a lot. It's got a Binding of Isaac tinge to it. You hear that? Very ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs> I need to stop using Enclair because he's too good for this. Like, I can't at the moment. Well, I guess I could bring in Hong Lu. 
maybe just for fun. Like when it starts getting hard and we'll know when it starts getting difficult, we just bring in Claire back, but maybe play with Hong Le for a while. Cause like, I love Aunt Claire, but the problem is that he's too good. We just blitz our way through everything. No chance. He's even one level higher than most of the other team members. All right, let's see what you got, buddy. And we'll have uh, we'll have uh, Yi Sang there because now everyone benefits from having high SP, so it works better for this specifically. Cruise party four. I love to party. Yep, those sure are horrible things. I know we have done this before, but let's have a look at you, Hongle. Good stuff. You know, I didn't really go over your skills. Probably should have. Oh yeah, he heals SP on use. That's really handy, actually. And he gains benefits when his SP is high. Still no soldiers. I don't know why you guys thought the same fight twice would have any effect on my ability to succeed here. Crimson Blaze Fist. Yeah, I want you to do it. I want to actually see it. I want to see it. I just want to see the Crimson Blaze Fist. Show it to me. Here we go. Come on. Come on, Hong Lu. Yes. Nice. That was a big fucking <laughs> little sparkle. What a guy. All oh, right, these guys have negative coin uh, skills, I see. Solid effort, lads, but all mermaids suck. Especially you guys. Absolute joke. So they were mermaids, I dare say. Yeah, that's why you need someone very fucking sober and very fucking focused at the helm if you're gonna have a party boat on the lake. So they ended up getting devoured by a whale. Pretty standard. And this deserted ship is the aftermath. Yeah, no, that makes sense. All oh, right, because there's not a wave happening right now, per se, but this ship got hit by a wave, so I'm assuming. Their single lapse of judgment led to this chilling catastrophe. I remembered Ishmael looking into the lake, muttering to herself. I also remembered the rough, biting words she threw at us. This was the reality of the great lake that Ishmael survived before joining us. Wow, look at that. How did we not see that? <laughs> a place where even the smallest mistake could mean total annihilation. A place where one must struggle endlessly to survive the terrible unknown. So this was the kind of path Ishmael sailed before joining us. Surprised she's still alive, really. If only, if only I'd known, then maybe I could have been more understanding of her. <laughs> Sentiments that perfectly mirror the player, might I add. Though I still maintain that she was being exceptionally and unnecessarily unhelpful. But frankly, I'm not interested in going back down that road because it's a boring road that's been labored to death. Instead, let's focus on what's going to happen next. I keep going back to my quarrel with Ishmael back at the boatworks. I can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, we should probably leave. Party's over, New Year's is cancelled. We left the cruise ship as fast as we could. After an indeterminate amount of time... So we didn't find anything. But you knew that, didn't you, Vergilius? I made the wrong call. I shouldn't have made such a rash decision. Yeah, actually. G legit, we shouldn't have gone to the fucking boat. Humoring anyone on that front was exceedingly foolish. That's a surprisingly understanding response. And that was that. Ishmael didn't say more. Hey, there we go. Something good came out of this. My god, there's something out on the water. It's like a mountain of bodies, and they're smiling? That's spooky. I hope you mean that that's the research facility and not something near the research facility. Well, we're almost there. Honestly, the sailing trip's gone surprisingly well. 
잠깐 밖에서 바람 좀 쐬고 올게요. Yeah, because the air here is lovely. Ishmael slowly returned to the spot by the ship's railings where she stood muttering to herself, continuing to mutter, a continuation of previous mutterings, as it were. For a moment, I wondered if I should follow her like I did earlier, but... Hmm... But maybe she wanted some time alone to think about things. I decided to leave her be. That's probably wise, to be honest. I wouldn't know what call to make in that situation. She's a bit... She's very much a closed book at the moment. It's hard to tell. Are you speaking to Dante or to yourself? Or both? Ah, She's forcing herself to be indifferent to the team. Doesn't make it okay, but it makes it understandable. Just to stab a whale? That's not gonna help. That's not. That don't. No, please. Come on, you've done this enough already. <laughs> please. I suspect there's more to this than just a whale, yes? You'll stab it right in its stupid clock face. Yeah, I'm familiar. Well, that's not very cold and harsh. I don't think you're committed to this at all. The calamity. <laughs> Are we there now? Is that just gonna happen now? We're we just gonna find that fucking whale. Okay, I'm ready. And by ready, I mean obviously I'm not. You know, it's whatever. I'm a big boy. Ah, by big, mostly tall, not big. I have no muscles. Uh. I bet you're looking forward to sitting on the boat and reading your book while we take care of things, hey? Not in one piece, I shouldn't think. I assume the whale would have disgorged its fucking mermaids and that would have been that, really. Oh, wow, that's striking. Uh, as Sinclair and Yi Sang shared their thoughts, the large structure loomed ever closer, out of the mist and into our line of sight. Oh, creepy. Ah, big creepy. Every sinner, save for Ryoshu, froze. It's an oil rig! Marvelous. I would love, I would have loved it if we were playing uh, Lobotomy Corporation back in the day and it panned out and it's like, you're on a fucking oil refinery in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Obviously couldn't be because you're playing in headquarters and headquarters would have to be in Nest L, but God, I would have loved it. It would have been so much fun. Was there any reference from World Cheers to the Great Lake? Like, it mentioned sailors and stuff, sure, but I know that World Cheers was based on a, like, uh, a Korean, like... Is it, like, folktale or, like, superstition? I don't know what the term is. I can't remember what the term is, but I know that's based on, like, a real-life silly thing. I can't remember if the description for World Cheers ever mentioned anything about a Great Lake. Yeah, I know it mentioned seafarers. I think that's all I've got. The sight was enough to shut everyone up. Everyone! Even Don Quixote. To hope that there may be any survivors in this structure was far too optimistic a notion for what appeared before us. Very perceptive, my boy. Yep, it's we're growing ever closer to a final boss fight, although there's still going to be a dungeon first. Only the smeared logo of the Lobotomy Corp branch glistened amidst mounds of pallid, blasphemous white. This was the undeniable reality we found ourselves in. Big problems, abnormalities, a whale, anything. Leave before the whale fucking kills us? Yeah, the calamity. Yeah, 
The good old days when ye sang nary peep to fucking word. How did we ever survive that period of time when we have this ye sang now? So vastly superior to previous ye sang. What a hero he is. <laughs> Kind of weird to think that back in Kanto 1, the entire team except Dante was laid low by just a single gas grenade. And since then, the things we fought, you know, even in that same Kanto, we fought through a war, you know, in someone's memory, but still fought through a war. But the whole 12 of us, pretty much, were defeated by a gas grenade. One gas grenade. It says a lot. I don't know, I wouldn't call, um, I certainly would never call Ishmael an actual traitor. I don't think that's, I just don't perceive her actions in that manner. But she's certainly volatile, unstable, unpredictable, and likely to do something that may put the rest of the team in danger for the sake of her own mission. So it's not that far off. She's not a traitor though, let me be fucking clear on that. As much as I am not keen on her, I'm not calling her a traitor, that's not fair. <sighs> I'm waiting for her to do something later on and I'll scream a traitor at her just because <laughs> that's the way things tend to go. I mean, we have to go look. We can't determine for sure here, but yeah, they're probably all dead. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So the Calamity, considering that not only were they still there, but I'm pretty sure they would be like unconscious or at least wounded. And even if they weren't, they were stranded with no backup or supplies. So the Calamity was... The Calamity the pilots mentioned didn't destroy the Lobotomy Corp branch. It transformed this place into something uncanny, something so grotesque that total obliteration would have been preferable to whatever happened here. Oh, Ain't that the truth? Also, I swear Virgilius can understand us by this point. Or read our minds, or both. Because the amount of replies he gives are on point, there's been too many. There's been far too many for it to be coincidence or intuition. What, did one of them die? Whatever do you mean, Mr. Guide? No, come on, give us more information than nothing. You're supposed to be our guide, you fucking tool. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's very fun. So even if you sail perfectly in line with the laws, there's always a fucking risk. Ignoring, you know, pirates. This is going to be fun. Good stuff. To be fair, like, I know, I talked shit about Virgilius a few seconds ago, but I would actually prefer he stayed with the boat to make sure it wasn't fucking sunk by, like, a whale or something. A whale didn't just show up and take over the boat. Nah, I'd want him to protect the boat, absolutely. Isn't that exactly why you should be coming with us? Sorry, Dante, but I'm with Virgilius on this one. He's thinking he really wants to finish that book, and also he brought... 10 gallons of ice cream that he doesn't want to share with us. Only him and Karen get to eat it. After a quick tinkering from Faust, the skiff tied to the side of Mephistopheles began its slow descent. It's the same skiff we used to get to the cruise ship. It's a good little bow, isn't it? It was a bit of an oversight to have a dinghy this fucking small for 13 people. The small engine on the skiff revved gently, and our short, sputtering journey to the Lobotomy Corp branch began. 
호수에는 원래 안개가 많이 끼나요? 아까 호수도 그랬고... 음, 주의하는 것이 좋겠소! 안개 속에서 갑작스레 나타나는 것은 모험의 기본 공식이니! That's the spirit. Everyone listen to Kyote. Oh my god, that is Fox. Now that we've got a closer look on it, that's really creepy. There was a growing sense of trepidation among the sinners. As we climbed the pale, membrane-enveloped stairs leading up to the lobotomy core branch. I don't know, can I? Not yet, we're still quite far away. Hmm. Fuck, I don't know, are you sure? Do you have the ability to sense golden bowels? No? Is it just me? Ah, then I'm telling you that I can't sense it yet. Rodia was visibly disappointed. Maybe she was half hoping that I'd tell her that the golden bowel wasn't here so that we should turn around and head right back to the Mephistopheles, but there's no fucking way. Where else would it be? I think that bad feeling will be entirely warranted. I think it will be 100% justified. I don't doubt it. The closer we got to the entrance, the more reluctant the sinner's gates became. As though they were growing increasingly wary that some unseen enemy could ambush them at any second. They're just a little spooked, Ishmael, just a little spooked. I mean, it would have one of two effects. She'd either be super sensitive to it or much more like she'd be desensitized. You know, it's one way or the other. They're not stopping, they're just slowing down. Good. <sighs> uh... Don't question the bravery of my boy Gregor. He served in the war, you know. 아저씨, 한참 전부터 저 자식은 말이 안 통했었는데 뭘 기대한 거야? There is admittedly not much point at this exact moment. There will come a point where that dialogue will become crucial, but it's not right now. <laughs> right now, we just got to get on with it. 좀 협조적으로 바뀐 것 같아서 착각이었나? Sorry, buddy. Maybe soon. We do gotta go. You know, we still have a job to do. Ishmael appeared to be the only sinner uninterested in the Golden Bow. The Golden Bow, the unfathomable, bone-chilling horrors of the lake. I was starting to believe that she considered all of that nothing but obstacles between her and her mission. Damn, son. Now, Yi Sang, you know that's a loaded question. Oh god, it's the white mold apartments from Fear and Hunger 2. Oh, I don't want to be back here. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Fuck this, I'm leaving. I it's foul? I don't know. Oh! It's fungi. I see. Or it's fungus. Yeah. It's probably just piece of pieces of whale. It's, I like I appreciate it's not this. It's absolutely not this, but it is giving me nothing there vibes, which concerns me ever so slightly. Oh my god, look! Holy shit, they're in the wall! I just noticed that. Oh no! It really is the white mold apartments. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Okay. Fool! If you think about it, you can get rid of the damn thing. Damn, I think that's the first time I've seen him shut someone down. <laughs> You guys are idiots. What about the Limbus people in the wall? What about them? Look, they're right there. I can see it. But guys, the Limbus people in the wall. 
people we're here for, among other things. Is there going to be a scrap, perhaps? Yes, the whaler. Yeah, place is fucked, honestly. <laughs> Don Quixote had stopped dead in her tracks. She was looking blankly at a section of the wall with the people in it. Interesting is a term you could use. You know it's bad when Don Quixote is like completely serious with no real emotion in her voice. That usually means it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. There's a person in this wall. It's not a sculpture. Why would it be a sculpture? And I don't see that happening, so I don't think it is. <laughs> Everybody, check off your Limbus Canto bingo cards. Sinclair nearly threw up. I swear that's happened every single canto. <laughs> Probably not. I don't think it happened in like canto 2, for example, but it feels like, and I might be wrong here, most of them, Sinclair nearly throws up. <laughs> Heed my words, wool person. Shan't fool for your trickery. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to have some form of reaction, maybe. <laughs> They're not even dead. Is that a leg? I hope they haven't been dismembered in the wall. <sighs> it's pretty bad, honestly, it is. I wasn't even making fun of Sinclair for that. It's, it's pretty bad. Hmm. <laughs> But what happens when we do? And also, can we even? And also, will he survive it? Mm. Distinctly possible. <laughs> Which, you know, Rody is- oh, sorry, Ryoshi is all for. But I don't think he'd appreciate it very much. What? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. The situation really did imply that the chances of finding survivors was extremely low. I wouldn't call this a failure. I don't think, like, let's track it back for a moment. You know, yeah, we arrived to rendezvous an hour and a half late, but if we weren't, if we had arrived here an hour and a half late earlier, like if everything had happened an hour and a half earlier, I don't think these guys would still be okay. You know? Maybe they would be, but I don't think they would be. I mean, we don't have ordinary human strength. We have a Merso and a Heathcliff and a Sinclair and a Don Quixote and a Ryoshu and a Rodia. Like, Le Rodia punch is pretty good. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. A little bit. So is Don Quixote going to help Ishmael take down the whale? What does it mean, though? Do you see now why I was like, mm, maybe don't promise Pilot will bring them back because they're probably dead and the chances of survival are low. You promise to look for them, not promise to bring them back. It's a distinct difference that doesn't get hopes up, you know? I feel for you, buddy. I do. Goddamn. Sorry, guys. But that ain't happening unless we happen to find a survivor. Unlike the other sinners, Ishmael didn't even spare a glance to those that were trapped within the walls, probably because she's seen it before. We should probably move on, admittedly. I guess there's nothing we can do for them, still. Then go do whatever, we'll catch up. I 
<laughs> I don't think leisurely is the right term. I don't think she's going to appreciate that one. I mean, it might put people at ease to have looked. Can you imagine being like having rushed it and been like, maybe there were survivors if only we'd looked for them? Right, that would be the worst. That would feel awful. Has little Don found something? That's spooky. Yet. The thing. Gross. You know what, Ishmael, I'm starting to see your point. This thing needs to die. <laughs> this thing is a serious problem and it needs to go. Uh, for funnies, for laughs, for giggles. But shit, it's for laughs, for giggles. Are you talking about that same whale you mentioned before? I presume this is the calamity, yes. Well, it's a calamity, isn't it? Because you didn't explain why we weren't ready. It's very fucking simple. So you're saying that that well you met devoured this building? Yeah. Huh, cool. How can you be sure of that? Uh, hmm. 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 I don't know. I feel like Ishmael would know this if she saw it, Dante. Yep. Ooh. Oh, can it reanimate? Cool. Oh, I can reanimate corpses as well. Very suspicious. Major sus. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's not think about it, hey. You're the one who said there were no survivors. You were very certain of this fact. Exactly. Hmm. Oi! Oi! Ishmael, you shouldn't get so close to... Ishmael strides toward the figure. I doubt it somehow. And if anyone would notice, it would be Masao. Oh. Are you... Are you the team leader? The closer Ishmael gets, the more of the figure's body is taken over by the pallid, off-white membrane. The voice grows increasingly incoherent. And they're gone. I don't... uh, evidently, it's not, because it happened. Maybe the whale's getting smarter. Ishmael. Keep it together, Ishmael. Ishmael. You have to get away from... Oh, sure. Whenever we get something wrong, it's like, uh, of course, you silly landlubbers don't know anything. But when you get something wrong, suddenly it's a mental crisis. I know it's not that simple. I'm just being facetious. I like to take jabs every now and then. This probably isn't the time for it. Yeah, you're right. You don't fucking say. Damn it, Ishmael. Move. 
I could have asked one of the sinners to stop her, but before I even realized what I was doing, I was running toward Ishmael. Apparently my other shoulder needs a fucking uh, piercing as well. I think it was guilt that pushed me to act. Guilt that I may have played a part in driving Ishmael to this point. Tante. He sings like, not again, <laughs> clock face. Oh. But guilt can sometimes help. Ooh, the figure's face shifted again when I approached Ishmael. The white membrane covering their face begins to withdraw as though an unseen force is peeling it off the skin. The mouth didn't come back, but the eyes that looked at us were unmistakably human shaped. They were blinking with effort. Hey, how's it going? Do you have any Marlin ice cream? Yeah, I'm magic or something, I don't know. Yes, I'm very cool like that. So thanks to the Golden Bow, it cannot actually consume the entire facility? Faust approached us. Ah, interesting. The figure, whose mouth was still wrapped under a pallid membrane, blinks wearily, as though they could understand what we were saying. I'm guessing for someone like those in the walls who are entirely already just completely claimed, it was it would be too late. There's nothing to reverse by that point because it's complete. But for someone who's in the process of being consumed, it can kind of turn it back. I don't know. Yes. It's like acting, but to counter it. Oh no, she's going to steal the golden bow, isn't she? Goddamn. Goddamn. I feel like that's a bit of a stretch. I understand desperation, you know, like, oh my god, can I actually fix the thing that I want to fix? But I, I just don't think that's going to be how it works. I think beyond a certain point, it's too late. But we'll see. Faust, I know you feel the need to be very exact in what you say, but you need to dissuade this line of thought right now. Or it's going to cause problems. Oh no. Though it was curt, I've never heard such intense desperation in her voice before. I don't think it's going to work out that way. I hope I'm wrong. I'd, I'd like to be wrong. <laughs> Oh no. You've completely gone off the deep end, haven't you? Ishmael looked at me with a vacant expression. Do I? So I'm guessing the reason I can see people's memories is because my shard of golden bow res like resonates with them. Because obviously the sinners themselves resonate with the golden bows of these specific locations. I don't know, it's a theory. Ishmael was right. Emotions of the past begin flooding, roaring before me. Ishmael. She stands alone in a sea of tall rolling waves. I nodded carefully. We're gonna get some backstory, finally! Fucking hell! Let's go, understanding! A fixer of the sea. Uh-huh. 
아세요? 아니, 보이세요? 모든 걸 걸고 아무것도 걸 것이 남아있지 않은 사람들의 표정이 파도를 가르는 게 고래잡이 배예요. So you've seen it yourself, the whale that devoured this place? 지금까지 우리가 만났던 고래들은 사람을 삼키면 나의 자신의 것을 재구성하여 바뀌게 만들죠. Yeesh. 하지만 그 고래는 다른 천백한 고래에게 삼켜진 이들은 하얀 마개만 감싸진 채 모두 그 형태가 온전하게 남아 있었어요. But for what purpose? Why would it do that? Why is it different? 운전하다고 하긴 좀 그런가? 외곽을 향해 키를 조정할 때가 감옥 있었죠. 그 온전한 척하는 배들이 바다에 떠 있죠. Fake ships. You gotta look out for fake ships. 손체 손체 하얗게 변해버린 배가. 고래잡이 사이에선 그런 배를 만나면 호수를 이리저리 돌아가는 한이 있더라도. 반드시 피하라는 이야기가 전설처럼 전해주어져 그 배는 원래 타고 있던 선원이 가지고 있던 습성이나 능력은 바뀌지 않은 채 So those quote unquote mermaids tend to be more dangerous than other mermaids because these are just people with all of their capabilities intact? 그저 호수를 돌아다니는 다른 것들을 습격하는 것이 음. 목적이 된 채로 돌아다니니까 Yeah 피코드 호의 선장이었던 자가 있어요. 패커드 맨션, 렛츠고! 그 자리의 목표가 그거였죠. 자기 손으로 그 창백한 고래를 잡는 것. 그 안에서 생활하는 내내 그 자는 그 고래를 잡아내는 것이 얼마나 가치 있고 대단한 일인지 설교를 늘어났죠. Yeah, that sounds about right from what I know of the ID. 귀가 따갑기도 했고 저자가 제정신이 아니라는 것도 알수 있었지만 아니지 어쩌면 우리를 미치게 하는 방법을 정확하게 알고 있던 걸지도 모르겠네요 Now the question is was she literally called Ahab in this game or were they a little more subtle? 어느새 우리도 그 창백한 고래를 잡는 것만이 인생의 유일한 구원이자 숙명이 되었죠 배 안에 모두를 미쳐버리게 만든 거예요. 그 선장. 결국 우리는 무언가 모든 악을 뿜어낸다는 그 고리를 마주하게 되었고. From which all evils of the world spout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The references are getting very direct now. It's not a bad thing. I'm not criticizing. It's just funny to see how direct the fucking uh, references are. I imagine if I knew more about the other Kanto's um, origin stories, or the stories from which they were created, I would have seen a lot of direct parallels as well. This is the only one so far that I'm even vaguely familiar with. But yeah, weaponizing insanity. The idea that this one whale is responsible for all problems in the world, even though it obviously isn't. But that's not the point. Yeah, no, I get it. Huh. Wasn't even close. Not a Scooby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. At a certain point, this stopped being a conversation. Yeah, it became uh, much more one-sided, funnily enough. Ishmael's words grew increasingly aimless, like a vortex of the sea endlessly whirling in place. Now it was clear what Ishmael's mission was, where the tip of her razor-sharp harpoon aimed. It was aimed at the captain that drove them all to damnation. An overwhelming tide of hatred and obsession burned fiercely in her direction. Interesting. Because naturally up to this point, I simply assumed that, oh yeah, hunt the whale, find Queequeg who might be the captain or might be a fellow crew member, I'm not sure. Those were like the two objectives. But no, kill the captain who spurred us all into a frenzy to hunt something far beyond our own capabilities. 
Good, I suppose, that she's not going to make us hunt a fucking calamity. I do appreciate that. <laughs> You're not entirely nuts, Ishmael. I appreciate that. Respectable. There was no room for reason or rationality to convince her otherwise. Dot, dot, dot. I suppose bringing up that I saw from Ishmael's obsession... And it's worth pointing out that this is why Ishmael learned the Calamity was here and wanted to go here, because she knew the captain wouldn't be far away, because the captain is hunting that um, Calamity. So it all swings around in circles, and it was an intentional bit of misdirection to make you think like, oh yeah, it's a fucking Moby Dick reference, so obviously she's hunting the whale. Not quite. The captain is hunting the whale, not Ishmael. Ishmael is hunting the captain. That's pretty cool. I appreciate that. But I suppose bringing up what I saw, that I saw from Ishmael's obsession, a glimpse of her old captain won't do anything to help right now. <laughs> Ishmael, we don't even know if that captain is still alive. Ah, so she does still live. Unfortunate, though it would be pretty funny and anticlimactic if it was like, you know, went through all this. Where's the captain? Oh, she was shanked by a rat <laughs> in the outskirts of, like, I don't know, some random ass fucking district. She's long gone, been dead for a while, body dumped in the sewer or something. And yet, somehow she lived. Couldn't have happened to a nicer person. No, the captain never cared about her crew. She simply cared about hunting the whale. Has to be still alive. But, and I can't help but be really unhelpful here. What if she isn't? What if she's dead? It sounds like she probably died from that encounter, and if she didn't, well, something else might have killed her, or she might have had another crack at the whale and died that time. What if she's dead? What will you do then? You've put it all into this. What if it's been done by someone else or something else, and there's nothing to do? Like buying a game and someone else beating it for you. What do you do now? <sighs> what, are you going to play it? It's already been done. <laughs> I suppose at the very least, Ishmael does need to at least find the captain's corpse for confirmation. If Even if she doesn't get to kill her herself, if she can at least find the captain's corpse and be like, okay, she's dead. Right, there's no two ways about it. There's no like, oh, she might be alive. Oh, she's probably dead. No, I've seen her body. She's deceased. We can move on. So we, she needs to find the captain in one form or another. Understandable. That makes sense. <laughs> Ishmael, you're acting a little funky right now. Do you want some ice cream? I wanted to ask her which we she was referring to. But I was starting to think that nothing I say would improve anything if it didn't outright bring everything crashing down. Yeah, this is a delicate situation, to be fair. Based on the knowledge we had previously, I do believe that Dante should have been more forward. But in this situation, it's like, her psyche is, and we have the knowledge now to know this for sure, no outside information uh, affecting views on this. This is just what we know from within the game at this point. Her psyche is a fucking Jenga tower. And as many little bricks have been removed as physically can without the whole fucking thing coming down. One breath of a word could push one of those bricks ever so fucking slightly and bring the whole thing down, and God knows what will happen when it does, right? <laughs> nah, there's not a lot you can do right now, Dante. Just hang tight. <laughs> you're doing your job by actually not doing anything right now. Funnily enough, your typical approach is the correct one right now. It is, uh, it is, uh, tentative. That was when an imperceptibly light breeze broke through the silence and knocked the final Jenga brick out, just as I called it. No, I don't think that's what's happening. A solitary butterfly. Interesting. 
It moved with grace, tinged with fragility, as though it did not fear the weight of this heavy silence. It took a moment to gently flutter onto a puddle. And she's like, it's the captain! And she throws a fucking harpoon at it. That's correct, Faust. Care to go on? <laughs> it is worthy of note, yes. After a quick respite, the butterfly fluttered its wings and took off once again. Are you sure? Yeah, something to break the silence. Yi Sang likes butterflies. He made a mirror for it or something. It might be a trap, but we're lost. It's the only thing with any sense of direction we have at the moment. Fuck it, follow the butterfly. What's the worst that could happen? Are we not going to address the person in front of us who had the membrane removed from them and might be alive, might be dead? We're not sure. Are we just leaving that? Of course you are. Yeah, hello. Did you forget about this person? Feed me bacon. I want bacon. Could be anything. Could be nothing. Who knows? Strangely specific. Hmm. Don Quixote was at the far back end of the line, looking back at the figure. Yeah, and what, do we just drag them around with us for the rest of their life? When I walked away, the pallid membrane grew over the face again, burying it. And it began to shamble. Is it as Ishmael said? Will they now roam the Great Lake, attacking everyone and everything they come across? Not only their physical senses, but also their sense of self, forgotten deep under the pallid membrane. Seems like it. Well, now we have an enemy to fight through, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. And most of these are in fact Twin Hook Pirates. Politified Thing Pirate. Gain two offense level and defense level for every living Politified ally, not counting this unit. At 10% of max HP, inflicts 20 SP damage on hit, inflicts one pallid noise next turn, then dies. SP loss efficiency plus two. If at less than or equal to minus 45 SP and inflicted with this buff, gain noise panic next turn. So unit dealt the final blow, apply five poise to all politified allies, apply one poise count. These guys are kind of dangerous. Uh, that'll fucking teach them. Whabams! Nice. No chance. We're fine. Oh my god. So the mermaids evolve a bit, huh? Pallid white mermaid. Yeah, this is when they become an actual mermaid. They inflict pallid noise as well. Same effect there. Politification as well. Spreading flames. If there are surviving politified allies at turn end, all enemies with 20 or more SP lose 1 SP for every surviving politified ally. That's not so bad, but it does lower our overall SP. Of course, it retains the skills of the pirates. It's just a shame that the pirates suck. Oh. That was a lot. Oh, they each individually apply that effect, so it's actually way more sanity drop than I might have expected. I see. Just one left. All right, far from the hardest shit we've had to deal with, but you can tell the game's starting to throw out a few more tricks. So, yeah, it's not going to be... I think from this point onwards, it's not going to be like, oh, this is where it gets hard, but it's going to be like, all right, this is where it starts to... I mean, I said that last time, so what the fuck do I know, but... This feels like where they're going to start to throw some... Uh throw some wrenches in the works. The lake and the butterfly, and look, there's more combat. Oh, joy, I can't wait. So exciting. That's, oh, those LCCB agents. Yeah, politify, politified things shield. Gain two offense level. Defense level plus one for every surviving ally. Gain one fragile next turn if an ally dies. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's see what you got. <laughs> oh, that's very cool! 
Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. No problems. It's all good. Don't worry about it. We're fine. We'll fight a whale. Fuck it. That's not even our job, but we'll still probably do it anyway. You're right, buddy. How you feeling? I would hope so. We smushed quite a few. Someone stood there, waiting for us. He must have arrived here much earlier than we have. Oh. The butterfly we were following folded its wings and settled gently. Into his sloshing head. That's always a good sign. Ooh. The figure's voice was clear and precise, unlike that of the mermaids. I have multiple questions, and you're answering none of them. And not like an abnormality. Huh. Yeah, that's the part you didn't expect, not the fishbowl head? Is the fishbowl head not a surprise to you? Do you not find that surprising? Is that not a little surprising to you, Sinclair? The fishbowl head? Is that not a little weird? I think I'm just being the weird one, frankly. I don't see a problem at all. No, wait, is he a distortion? Probably, yeah. But whom and why? Yeah. Thiefcliff, please, that's excellent material, but now's not the time. Yeah, this is Glib, glib, glib Glob. This is Glib Glob from Glib Glob's Friars and Bar. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Yeah, what's the deal? One of many ways to choose to understand the journey that is the world. There are many secrets to be found inside of these riddles. I'm very wary, thank you. It splishes and sploshes so. What does that mean? I was going to say dude, but unconfirmed. What does that mean, unconfirmed? Rim. Hey, Rim. Do you like playing Rimworld? Hmm. Yeah, why do you have a butterfly, you weirdo? One would assume. Do we have to fight this person? Because I feel like they're a bit beyond us. Just putting it out there. If someone's just standing there in a suit, it's usually not a good sign if you want to fight them. That usually means they're pretty tasty. If they're standing somewhere in a suit where you really shouldn't be wearing a suit, I think is the key point. Well, here we are, you're looking. I know, right, Hong Lu, we've got another fan. How do we have so many fans? Uh-huh. Hmm. Maybe you'd like to be really helpful? I mean, we don't know that for sure yet. Wait, you're here to tell us or you're here to stop us? Hold up, roll that back. <laughs> Just need some sleep, Gregor. It's been too long. Sure. I still can't sense the golden bow this deep into the branch. There was truth to what he said. The bow was no longer here. Oh god. Oh. Then where is it? Yes, indeed. Oh god, it's Encorp. Yeah. 
He's a fan, Sinclair. You know, we have such a good history with fans. Interesting. Maybe I thought it would be really tasty. So we do have to fight the whale? Is the whale going to be the dungeon? Do we have to go in the whale to find the golden bowl that it ate and we have to fight abnormalities and mermaids in it as we go? It's very convenient that you're here to tell us this, mind you. And isn't that the same color as... What's his fucking name? That kid. Where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? I don't remember his name. It's a good question. Indeed. So it does matter who claims it, actually. Demian, that's it. That's a stupid name. Sovereigns of a star. Okay. All right, buddy. Sure. What with your fishbowl head? So you want your own stars? Okay. A red mark briefly flashed on his head, yeah. Yeah. I've seen that mark before. Yep. Yep. We're back to this plot point. Yi Sang shot a silent gaze in Rim's direction. Rim. Rim. Are you willing to divulge some deets, my dude? Are you willing to divulge? Hmm, yeah, hmm. Is he the one in the picture with the weird face? Is it the guy with the weird face? Uh-huh. And yet here you are. Have you noticed here that the tips of his fingers are cut off? What's up with that? Mm-hmm. That's not an answer to the question, though, is it? You're implying an answer, but you haven't given an answer. And now you're just talking around the point. Are you Youngji? That's the problem, of course, is that distortion often comes with a distinct loss of humanity. Or general empathy, I find, is said to be the case. Not always the case. It's not always the case. But people who distort do tend... Usually they become incredibly violent, but for the most part, they tend to become a lot more disconnected from people, from standard human ways of thinking. Which makes sense, given the process. Just 
그 가지가 정말로 이 백화 현상을 덜어주는 게 맞다면. Ishmael's breathing was quick and light. She can finish her sentence. It can be said, but that means there's a catch, no? 그렇군요. <laughs> All I've ever wanted was to be a good signpost. I think I've done it. Now you just wander around doing whatever the fuck. Wings! That is all. You can go back outside now. Stop right there, criminal scum! Okay. Like water. Well, on a slightly hostile uh, end, I guess. Thanks, Otis. Uh, we, we, we part ways. With that, he stepped into the puddle and disappeared into its depths. Did you have to threaten him, Otis, really? Like, we're trying to, you know, got a reputation. Like, we're a company, and we can't just go around threatening people. Wait, what do you mean the lake and the butterfly, too? All right, I'll bite. <laughs> sure. Oh, hey, guys. How's it going? I see my golden bow resonance isn't doing much for you. Pallid bipedals began to fill the void Rim left behind. It's almost as if, um, you know, cussing, not cussing him out, but threatening him did us no favors. Because he's a fucking distortion. And they can just do whatever they want, I guess. Sure. In layman's terms? Sinclair, on his forehead there was... Yeah. The one who bisected Chroma with a flick of his wrist. The one who silently approached me to talk. Oh, I remember the one marked with the bright red sign. I'd prefer to talk to Rim, to be honest. And now mermaids. Too easy. These mermaids ain't all that. They're just a bunch of gross things. Whatever. I could take on a few more. Ah, it's nothing to me. Alas, <clears throat> don't think we're going to get the EX on this one. I'll have to do it off camera. It's all good, as long as we win. Yeah, there was some moves I made. Yeah, there was some moves I made that, like, weren't damage efficient because I didn't notice that there were four waves in it and I was just playing it a little bit safer, which I didn't need to make. I could have gone for more damage, but I was trying to reserve stronger moves for later on in case we needed them for clashes, which resulted in a couple turns in which it was like, yeah, there's literally one dude left with five HP and we have to waste an entire turn killing him, which put us pretty bad on like the turn order. So I reckon I could literally do that off camera, win rate it, and that'll be an EX. Such is life. Also, Hongla is not that big a damage dealer, but I like having him on the field. It's fun. It's interesting. But yeah, there's no golden bow here. Huge downer. What, can you sense them now? We have to go find that whale, don't we? Yeah, we should probably leave before that happens to us, hey? I mean, they seem to like us, so it's probably fine. 확실히 결과적으로만 보면 저희를 도와주긴 했었죠. 아주 조용히 다가왔지만 말이에요. And considering the Otis threatened him like twice, you can't really blame him for being quiet about it. Hi. Oh. 우리가 뭘 어쩔 수 있지? I have no idea what that means. 그렇네요. There was nothing we could have done. Thank you, Sinclair. No, but he seems to like Dante as well. 
그 자가 믿을 수 있는 자인지는 어떠한 증자도 없습니다. Well, there's not a lot we can do about it. He went into a puddle and vanished. He's not our primary concern right now. 결국 그 자들의 목적이 무엇인지 명확한 말도 없이 내빼지 않았습니까? 야, 그래도 얼굴 튼 사이니까 뭐라도 알거 아니야. 뭐 없어? I mean, he sang dead, yeah. 내가 알던 그와는 너무도 달라진 터라. 갈피를 잡지 못하겠어. Alas. Let's fucking leave, huh? It's pretty clear that the Golden Bow isn't here anymore anyway, and we might all get infected with white mold apartment goo and then get sent to the other world, and I don't want to hear that fucking music again, quote unquote. It's really not music. Getting real familiar with the wall. That's what fate remains. Alas. Damn, Heathcliff, that was surprisingly soft. It's true. Until Canto 6, in which things which were presumably too far gone to be helped become not too far gone to be helped, or are super far gone to be helped. I don't know, we'll see. Sir Heathcliff. He's a nice boy sometimes, very occasionally, in very specific circumstances. <laughs> With the pallid mermaid's unintelligible signals echoing behind us futilely, we decided to leave the lobotomy court branch as there is literally fuck all here for us. We will likely never understand them. Probably not. Until we get into the whale and then it's like, hey, here's a pamphlet on how it works. And we're like, oh, cool. We're not going to read it, though. I've got 25 energy left, so we'll literally do one more and then I'll do. That seems reasonable. We're over two hours anyway. Made some solid progress. Things have happened. No golden bow. No survivors. This place is a dump. Nope, I have no idea. Honey. 새로운 시선의 작품을 볼수 있는 기회였으니 나쁘진 않았군. <웃음> all that for nothing. I suppose I wasn't all for nothing. It was pretty all for nothing, actually. 뭐 괜찮지 않겠어? 보통 이렇게 털리는 경우는 다음부터 대박 날 징조더라고. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. 음, 아무래도 그 가지를 찾으려면 호수 한복판을 해적거리 할것 같은데. <웃음> Gregory would have been really good to mention before you go on the fucking boat that you don't know how to swim, because that's a really important skill to have when you're a fucking sailor. So we're gonna have to hunt the whale, which means we'll find the captain probably. Yep, we're gonna get fucking bodied. <laughs> as big as a windmill <laughs> those fucking windmills <laughs> do not talk to Don Quixote about those fucking windmills no we lack any kind of weaponry that could affect such a large target Ishmael's little harpoon is not going to do much it's meant for a person anyway no, not puke it into our palms, perhaps puke it on the floor and then clean it. You know, we're not savages. Go back to what? Do you think Vergilius is going to let us go back? We're too far now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because Vergilius will totally let us do that. Yeah, yeah. 그렇게 아무렇지 않게 없던 일로 하고 그 다음 작전으로 넘어간다. Do what Ishmael said to begin with, which was come here later or not at all. Hmm. 황금 가지를 이런 식으로 포기하는 게이 집단에서 용인되었는지도 모르겠지만. Alright, I see what you're saying, but you were the first to suggest this idea. 그게 어찌 되었든 저는 돌아가지 않아요. 여기까지 내가 어떤 마음으로 버텨왔는데. That's respectable. 
but don't forget that you were the first person to say, hey, let's not bother. You know, just putting it out there. Those chicken skewers? Yeah, they were pretty good. Faust is like, indeed, the chicken skewers were very good. Yeah, we'll just punch the whale, it'll be fine. We can punch pretty good. Why? Well, we're going to have to anyway, because we need to go back to the boat, so yeah. Alas. <laughs> I mean, you guys could probably do with a rest anyway, surely. <laughs> You're so smart. That intuition of yours is A+. plus. <laughs> Whoa. A sudden shock shook everyone. Uh, let's go first. Just leave. Let's leave. Time to leave. What, did middle boy show up for literally no fucking reason? Oh my god. He actually did, didn't he? Why? Why? I fucking doubt it somehow. We have to fight a fleet. That's also bad. It was as Heathcliff said when we first got to this branch, the water level was down there, but now it had risen high enough that the waves were lapping at the platform we were standing on, which is pretty bad. How is fascinating. And we're being shelled, you know. Nothing major. Is someone's limbs gonna get blown off? If so, they managed to misfire twice in a row, which is pretty bad. Numerous harpoons suddenly riddled the ground we were on. Oh cool, we're not being shelled, we're being perforated. We were being bombarded with harpoon shots, flung with nary a care whether it hit someone or not. That's pretty bad. Ryoshu parried a few harpoons away with the back of her sword, but there were simply too many. The fact that she parried any is pretty fucking sick. I'm writing that down, fuck it. Okay. Twit hook. Gregor, I need to talk to you for a moment over to the side. I know we're being bombarded by harpoons, but give us a minute. <clears throat> Listen, buddy, like, I had to talk about this to Heathcliff before, but, like, your smack talk is really suffering. I hear what you're saying. You're not on form today, but you really need to step it up because this is embarrassing. At least go with twat hook, you know? Has a little more impact. All right, we'll talk about this later. We're about to die. Uh, yeah, we're being shot at. <sighs> Ishmael, you know for a fact that if I had not spared that lady, I can't remember her name, Smee, if I had not spared Smee, there would be three times as many and they'd have all been middle members. Uh. Forsooth. <laughs> Everyone shut up and listen to Heathcliff. He's a smart guy, he'll get us through this. Oh, are you saying they can't enter yet? What's it? Uh... No. Are they pulling... You know what, let's find out. Ooh. So that's how. Ah, uh, they use the ropes from the harpoons to travel. Yes, that is fun. I do appreciate it. 
More twat hooks. <laughs> Are you ready, kids? Cool, cool, cool. Good, good, good. Looks like we're going to fight. Uh, I assume middle guy will be on his way. Hey, guys. It's been a while. How you been? Level 38. Yeah, you're getting up there. Look, we fought mermaids. We fought off a whale. This is laughable. Come on, pirates. We've dealt with pirates. I mean, come on. Roll out the big brother already. I've gotten way too cocky. It's time for me to have a beatdown. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. But that's what I'm talking about next time, ladies and gentlemen. That's a cliffhanger for you, right? Next time, we've. I hope we fight the big brother. It'd be a bit of a fucking downer if we didn't. After all that, after all this build up, it's time for a scrap. Oh, I'm going to get bodied. Uh, and it's going to be before a Purgish Snack as well, which means I'm not going to get Mbiotis and I'm not going to get new fancy Sinclair. So big sad, but whatever. Maybe we'll get them in time for the dungeon. I hope so. That would be nice. But that'll be then. This is now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. I guess this one has been a little less sane even the last few, but that's because there's been a lot of information. There's a lot of stuff for me here, for, here for me to digest, especially the whole rim stuff and the whale and the revelation that Ishmael is in fact hunting the captain, not the whale. There's a lot going on. And I'm very interested to see what happens next, but this is all my material right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Lit Potatoes, Proxy, Kamenera, Heartland, Harak J, Dresso, Sion Distance, Lol, Final Legend, Etherbin, Linky, Zeon Cedar, Bimblewort, Majoko Maimoon, Alkir, Sweet Baby Red, Jessica Kissy, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Leper Lullaby, K-Bub, Magical, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Warmaster OQ, SCP-106A, Namad, and KennyT800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you all so much for watching. The lure team's still pretty fucking good, but I think it's about to be tested, like, actually properly. Uh, if we do have to fight a big brother, that's a big deal. Uh, I'm gonna probably look into my ego a bit more between this episode and the next one, make sure I've got good ones equipped, make sure they're thread spun and ready to go. If I, I'll look into, um, better burn ego as well. I met, I remember hearing about El Capote or something, I think, and maybe another one which helps with burn teams. So I'll go look at the dispenser and see if there's anything worth doing there. And then I'll get them on camera so we can have the cool cutscene and stuff. But this might be the time where it's like, all right, Foreman, make your fucking prep because things are about to get serious. But then again, I thought things were about to get serious for like two episodes now. So we'll see what happens. I'm not... I appreciate it's all different difficulty levels for different people, so I'm not assuming like, oh, everyone's full of shit, this Gando's easy. I'm like, nah, it's just the point in which it's going to challenge me. We haven't determined when exactly that point is yet, right? Like, it might be next time, it might be this fight, or it might be the dungeon. It might be the end of the dungeon, we don't know. We don't know yet. Y'all know what's difficult, but you don't know what I'm going to find difficult, and I don't know what I'm going to find difficult. So, looking forward to seeing that. I need a beat. I think I'm overdue for a beatdown, right? I'm overdue for something I really struggle with. But if that happens, I hope I see you there. Doodles, goodbye.